Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful morning here in central Illinois. I have a little wren about, there he is, about five feet away, joining me for breakfast this morning. I've done a couple of pen videos in the last week or so, and I just couldn't make myself post them because it just seemed too frivolous at this time when people are um, demanding their rights and suffering and still dying from COVID. And uh, it, it's, it, it feels like, it feels like the United States is imploding, quite frankly. But one still needs, in between the moments of trying to figure out how to act in this moment, how to make a difference, uh, one still needs moments of pleasure. So here are some damn pens, and they are great pens. And what I want to talk about today is some modern flex nibs and just sort of put them side by side and you know me i'm not so scientific-y about it but you'll get to see a little bit of handwriting and and get my thoughts on how the nibs differ and in the the ones that i'm looking at are the edison this is an edison morgan i'm very fond of edison pens i have quite a number of them you've heard me talk endlessly about leonardo pens and this is uh, an Art Deco Ebonite Sand, and it has my what is my first, and it's not going to be my last, Leonardo Flex Nib. And this is a, a Santini pen. And I had not seen or touched Santini before, but I kept reading this stuff online about what great nibs Santini has. So um, I ordered one in February because of COVID. It's an Italian pen because of COVID. It, there were delays in manufacture and shipping. So I just got it, uh, just got it yesterday. I've not written with it a whole lot, but it is a special nib. And it's a, it's a handsome pen. It's not, um, I, think that the, I think that the material is very great. I think the material is great. I do, I'm not, I'm not crazy about this wide cap band and it's got a little, it's got uh, the Santini Italia in script in the band and it just, um, it's not so much my cup of tea, which is one reason it took me a while to pull the trigger on a Santini pen because the looks of them didn't like, they didn't make me crazy like the looks of the the art deco just made me want to have that pen and and hold it and use it and have it in my collection so much so that i now have six of them in different colors but the santini didn't grab me that way but i just kept reading about these great nibs and you know what the nibs are great it is worth it so let's change the angle and watch how and uh, get a look at how these pens write now again i'm sorry i didn't do this very sciencey i didn't use the same inks in the pens i didn't clean out the pens before i loaded them with ink i didn't um spend oh little wren making a nest i didn't spend a lot of time um sort of plotting out how i was going to do this comparison just want to take three pins outside today and play with them. And here we go. So the three pins that I've got here are the Santini Libra, the Edison Morgan, and the Leonardo Officina Italiana uh, Momento Zero Grande, and the fabulous Art Deco Ebonite. <coughs> All pins I love. Um, although this one's the newest to me, so it's a first love kind of love. We'll see how long it lasts. Um, so let's start with the Edison. And uh, I have to say that, again, I kind of do these videos by the seat of my pants. This has Robert Oster ink in it, and you can see that, um, you can see that the, the sheen on the feed, which means this is not well, it doesn't mean, but what often goes along with sheening inks is they don't flow quite as well as others. So I uh, wanna, wanna give a little bit of forgiveness there to the, the Edison if we have um, some flow issues, because I, when I've used this with non-sheening inks, it's fabulous. Um, I'm really fond of the Morgan. I think it's a, I generally like cigar-shaped pens, but this isn't quite cigar-shaped. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit different. And this is a very fun material too with um, blue with some little gold flecks, goldish yellow flecks in there. 
Anyway, um, cartridge converter filler, and this is Edison's Flex Pen. See, we had just a little bit of a hard start there. And you see, I can get really quite a lot of flow and I'm flex out of this. And if you, um, and it really, really has a, a lot of, a lot of give. Um, this is a plastic feed and it keeps up pretty well. Like I say, occasionally a bit of a hard start, but if I'm not using a heavy sheening ink, that's, uh, that's not so bad. And never write my name like that. Now, um, so you get a good amount of line variation, but what's really fun about this pen is how much bounce there is, how much give there is. And even with all of that, I mean, if I, if, if you had it like that, you would risk springing the nib if you did that all the time. But for a flow of writing, it's just, it's really fun. And this is, again, it's not at all like Vintage Flex in which you would get that kind of give and you'd also get a bit more tine separation without using losing viscosity. I'm not sure that's the right word. Flow, a kind of goopy flow that you need for, uh, for writing. So it doesn't, it doesn't offer the kind of line variation you get with this feel um, in a vintage pen, but it's really a lot of fun. And I have, even though Edison steel nibs are Yovo nibs and they're great, I've started getting most of my Edison pens with this flexi nib. And then we have <coughs> the Art Deco. Uh, Leonardo has only recently been producing these <laughs> flex nibs and you know this hat again I love I just love the Leonardo feeds not only are they ebonite so the flow is really great but that that shape of that feed um, is really cool and adds to the vintage feel of it so if you look at this you get quite a bit of give there and um, what a nice nib So you can see in terms of variation of line, maybe a little bit more than the Edison, and it still has quite a lot of bounce. It's very, very nice. This, by the way, is diamine, ancient copper. Little skip there. Um, I honestly, the occasional skip when I'm using a flex nib and really trying to work it, that does not bother me at all. I think this um, feed for the mo for any kind of normal writing, even quite fast writing, it keeps up pretty damn well. So I'm, I'm really delighted with this and damn, I'll probably have to get more nibs like this on my future Leonardo pens. And I say damn because the Leonardo steel nibs are also really great. And in general, I think there's not much reason to get a gold nib on a Leonardo pen because the steel nibs are so good and the gold nibs are kind of stiff and so I don't see much of a I don't get I don't really get much of a difference between a gold and a steel nib on the Leonardo pens until they come up with this guy Th this is worth the extra bucks very see just very fun very fun all right, and now the new kid on the block. This is the um, Santini Italia, and this really pretty forest green material. I think they call it emerald. And I, I'm just amazed at the acrylics that are coming out of Italy these days because they are acrylics, they're not celluloids, Dang, if they don't have that kind of depth and shimmer that one associates with celluloid. And look at this pen. Look at this really um, uh, gra nicely graduated section, long section. Uh, I think I'm going to enjoy this pen a lot. But this, right here, what you're going to see right now will be the first sentence, whole sentence I've written with the Fine Flexi 
Santini pen. And notice it doesn't have the cutout wings that the other two nibs have. So much finer, right? Much finer, no pressure stroke, but I can let it go again. Sorry for that absolutely horrific handwriting. It keeps up really well. Of course, I'm going quite slowly. Now, it doesn't have that super spring of the other two nibs, but it's, it's, and it's, it feels a little firmer. So in some ways, for everyday writing, for when you're not wanting to um, really be pushing a nib and experimenting a nib, and, and by the way, with all these nibs, you need to be very careful. Oh my God, look how wet that is. This, by the way, is Leonardo Green Ink, um, which I love Leonardo inks. Look how vibrant that is. Uh, um, so with all of these, nibs. You're going to need to be careful not to push it too far uh, where you, you could spring the nib so that the tines don't come back together. But this is really fun. It takes it well, very well tuned. It takes a very, I, this is just the weight of the pen, right? And I can add more pressure, write faster, and it still just keeps going. So all three are winners. Um, I think these two are closest to each other um, in that they have so much give to the nib that you, that you really, it's a, it feels very different when you write with this pen. Um, this is just a little bit firmer. Um, you don't get quite the, the drama <laughs> that you get with the other two, but you still get, um, some nice variation in your line and just that that thing that I like see I'm a terrible writer right the thing that I like about a flex pen is not even so much the line variation but the way a flex pen feels as you write with it the, the way you, you can you feel it kind of um, giving and letting go and coming up and, and it's just uh, the bounce of the pen across the page I find really pleasurable in um, in flex nib pens, even if I'm not really taking advantage of the flex because I'm such a crappy writer, I can't. So when I first started collecting pens, I collected vintage Waterman pens. So I had a lot of really great vintage flex nibs, but honestly, my handwriting and my impatience uh, is such that I never really took advantage of um, what I, I even had some like super flexy nibs wet noodles as they say I never really took advantage of their characteristics I just thought having a pen that was a hundred years old was pretty cool and um, I liked ebonite and I liked ripple pens and I liked the variation in ripple patterns that you could see how you could have such you can have variation within a theme and yada 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 I like vintage pens but at some point I kind of got tired of messing with how hard they are to clean out I wanted to play with all the cool inks that were coming out sheening inks and all that kind of stuff which I did not want to put in a vintage pen or in a pen that had a bladder because cleaning them the only way to really clean that stuff out of one of those pens is to take it apart and replace the sack and I was not going to do that every time I put ink in a pen so I, I moved more and more toward um, modern pens short I'll, I'll talk more about the movement I made toward modern pens and my uh, pen collecting at another time but my point here with this video is I like modern flex pens better because they, I feel like I can have a bit more control over them than with the vintage flex. Now, if you are somebody who has beautiful handwriting, who wants to take time with lettering, 
who is doing uh, calligraphy or any other kind of uh, marked and fancy lettering, there's nothing like a vintage Waterman nib. There just isn't. Wall had some good, other, other brands had some good ones, but there's nothing like a vintage Waterman nib. But for what I like in terms of having a nib that is responsive, being able to have one pen feel very different from another pen, these modern flex nibs I think are great. And you can, there are other brands out there that have nibs that they call flex, which I do not find flexy at all because you gotta work to make them flex, noodlers. Uh, these do not, they, they, they feel just like a great responsive pen. So I would recommend any of them. Enjoy your pens. Have a good day. Now the cat wants me to come pay attention to her.